thanks for everyone for joining us today. We are welcoming John Miller, who, uh, as Duncan explained, uh, is a wonderful personality. We affectionately call him the original glass cowboy because uh, he's adventuresome in spirit, always trying new things, hard to pin down. And that makes for a really wonderful artist. So we're really pleased to be with him today. And I think uh, everyone will enjoy the studio and the work and uh, meeting with John. So uh, we're going to start. John has a presentation, but he's going to say hello and a little bit about himself. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I, uh, I absolutely love DMG. Wonderful, wonderful people. Um, they make everything so easy and they're so inviting and, and just just good good staff all around love being there the class um i believe was last january uh the january before last um i can't remember you guys can can bear better with the dates but the class that that i taught there was was a really phenomenal class in that no glass experience needed at all for the class you just come in sit down, make a pattern out of cane, you'll see some images coming up soon. And then we pick the pieces up and gaff for you. So it was a great class. I hope we get to do it again. And I really think we could do, you know, between a dozen and 20 in that class. And that's, you know, all, all ranges of ages and stuff. I think we were 14 to 65 in that class. So anyway, thanks a lot. Um, great experience, love, love working with the gallery. This first presentation is an overview of uh, John's career. He's going to start about telling us about when he first picked up a crayon and uh, became an artist. So pretty much. <laughs> you, John. Okay. There we go. Is that good there? It's great. Okay. Well, I'm going to fly through this. Um, and, um, and like I, like Mary said, if you have any questions, you can send them along. Um, my, my lectures are more like a backyard barbecue rather than a, you know, uh, uh, th this is my stuff. Look how great I am lecture. Um, so there's a lot of inspirational images. There's a lot of family members and things like that. So I'll go ahead and start with, um, a couple of quotes here. Everybody knows who Hunter Thompson is. So. I always like to put this in. He was a little bit of a nutcase, but that's okay. I am too. And then uh, Duncan and Mary, check this quote out from Oldenburg. I absolutely love it. I read it in the book that I had of his, and I was like, I need this quote for my lecture. Um, I love it. I'm a little bit afraid of metal or glass. Fantastic. Uh, Oldenburg was one of my big influences in college because in the 90s, when I was a grad student in, um, at the University of Illinois, um, everybody was doing very, very hev heavy conceptual work, really down, down heavy stuff. And I saw Oldenburg and said, holy cow, you can be funny and still you know, be an artist. And that was the kind of the green light for me. So that's um, my mom and, and me in about 73. I still have that little pistol in my sock drawer. Is my mom in high school. And my two kids, Jesse and Sammy. They are now 15 and 20. And there's my daughter again. And then the little guy in Madison, Connecticut. I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. We're going to be here in a couple of weeks um, uh, in that exact place right there. Uh, this is my wife, Lisa who has been down to the gallery. And Duncan, you changed her life with your garden. Uh, we've got about, mm, I don't know, 2,500 in the backyard in the last couple of months. Um, but she absolutely loved being there, great experience. Uh, that's my first uh, career as a car racer. I was probably, that's probably around 70, 71. My dad and my sister, my father was a motorcycle racer and a dealer and a restoration guy. And that's him in the middle there, uh, crouched down. They built that bike and he was the only one that would actually race it because they were scared of it. That was 1969. This is 1973. This is my dad. So you can kind of see the whole glass blowing motorcycle thing um, is tied together. Um, Normal Illinois is where I am currently uh, living in the head of the glass department at Illinois State. This is some of the students, 
sand casting. So we have a, a, a fairly interesting facility there. It's the original ag building from the 1800s. So I'm constantly fixing everything, including the roof. It's a day on the job for me. Uh, this is the Tacoma Museum of Glass. This is the beginning of the first Rick Allen goblet that I made, which we'll get into in a little bit. Buster Keaton, huge, huge influence on who I am, how I move, everything. Um, the guy just blew me away. And everybody knows this scene here with the facade of the building falling over his head and missing him by two inches. That's kind of, when I saw that and realized that he was the mastermind behind all of this, and uh, uh, just a, an absolute uh, um, silent film genius. It really changed me forever. Uh, here's Oldenburg with a little tooth uh, paste tube. There's a bag of fries from Oldenburg. Love, love this work. Um, BLT made of vinyl that's about five feet wide. Uh, this is uh, my cousins and, and me uh, back in Connecticut. I grew up in North Haven, Connecticut. Spent a lot of time in this house. My family uh, came in uh, from, uh, well, through Ellis Island, ended up in upstate New York and then homesteaded in North Haven, Connecticut in 1951. Uh, this is my old career as a road racer. And uh, this is Daytona Speedway. So this is some of the stuff I did with my dad when I was a kid. And this, once again, you can tie this into glass blowing and who I am as a person. I mean, it's just clear as a bell. We built these bikes too, uh, from scratch, rest up, restored. It's my 55 Ford, my 52 Chevy, which is right where I am right now. Hi, uh, that's, the, that's the, um, the storefront window. I'm sitting right in that blue furnace there. That's my hot shop. 75 Ford van, I bought that out at Pilchuck, filled it with glass and drove it home to Illinois, made it, <laughs> as you can see. Okay, there's actually work in this. Uh, they, these are the corset vessels. There's images of some larger ones coming up later, but these started around 93, and they're copper corsets that you slide over the bubble in the hot process, and uh, then expand the bubble. And then the, if you see the close-up on here, that's all from the heat. The copper uh, uh, flakes and uh, discolors so all these different beautiful pinks and golds and blues and purples, and uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they're they just really fun pieces. And, I, and it was, uh, believe it or not, I woke up with that image in my, in my uh, lucid dream and, uh, and went in and made it that day. Here's some of the larger ones that I have images of later as well. These are about five feet tall. Um, graduate school work, um, an abstract still. Another view, these are about 25 inch, um, spheres and then a wall piece from that series my grandmother my great grandmother was a bootlegger in uh bradford pennsylvania and so i found out about all this stuff and it blew me my mind in grad school found out she was slowly poisoning herself from the lead and the still and she passed at 39 so it just kind of blew the door wide open for me as a, an artist um, so i started making some work about uh, my family those are 44 inch bottles, by the way, 10 gallons of whiskey. Okay, the high volume series, I started in grad school. These are uh, based, there's my daughter, ha <laughs> ha, I love that shot. These are based on, there's so many different levels to these pieces, but they're based on the Venetian influence in the glass scene. Also, the goblet form, uh, the influence of the goblet form in our culture. Um, when I was just starting to get together this series, I went to, to uh, Costco and saw a plastic snapped together ser Venetian serpent goblet that was like $4. And I just, I just said, I need, I need to do something about this. So I, uh, I started making these forms gigantic uh, in size. So you really had to pay attention to the scale and uh, uh, study it really. And then you're, you're kind of, uh, um, gauging your own human size when you're by this work. Uh, the Gathering series is an extension of the high volume series, but I called 22 of my 
very close friends and uh, collaborated on work. Rich Royal to the right, uh, Rick Allen to the left. I know that they both show at the gallery. This is a, a half of the show in 2010. Thurman Statham, the De La Torre brothers, Powell, uh, Nick Mount, Martin Yanetsky, so many great people in the show. Davide, Salvadore, Rick again, Martin Yanetsky, uh, Shelley, um, Mazlowski. That's at the gallery. Um, two or three years ago, had an exhibition with DMG, and that thing flew out the door, which is great. Thurman Statham. Uh, this is the largest piece from the series. This is by Fritz Dreisbach. This is five foot two and uh, probably about 90 to 100 pounds. Um, and we made this together at the Museum of Glass in Tacoma. Great experience. Here's a Stephen Powell. Um, another one from the high volume. I put these in because the images are really nice and clean. I have all this work here. We'll take a look at it later. A blue plate special most people know me for, which is the diner series. And I do a lot of uh, obviously research and development, as you can see. Um, so this is R&M Tavern at Corning Museum. Uh, this is a Cleveland Browns football helmet tailgating van, which I absolutely love. So big, big Americana layer going over all this work which is how I grew up on the East Coast. Uh, Kicks on 66 Diner, uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, Hall, Idaho. It's about a 10 foot tall sign. I love that thing. I think it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, Chelsea, New York. I made that cigarette out of glass and left it on the sidewalk for the New Yorkers to fool with. It was great. Should have videotaped it. A mug and bun is one of my new connections from my wife. This is in Indy, and it's your typical Speedway, uh, Indiana drive-in where you pull under like Happy Days, uh, to uh, reference my age. And, uh, um, you know, root beer floats, all that great stuff. But the signage is killer. I absolutely love it. And it is now coming into my museum-based work, the neon is. Mike's Chili in Se Seattle area. A Dick's Deluxe, first fast food place in Seattle. Coney Island, Louisville Slugger, sorry, Louisville Slugger Museum. Uh, Permanti Brothers in Pittsburgh, the original trucker's sandwich. So you can see fries, uh, meat, coleslaw, tomatoes on fresh Italian bread, yummy. I haven't eaten yet, so. Uh, research and development shot. I have work uh, in this lecture of this piece. Uh, 12 gallon beer on the left. Um, this is a place I woke up in the morning at a rest area sleeping on my steering wheel. And this sign was right in front of me on the way home from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I said, slide lecture material, 88 pound bacon cheeseburger. Some more, I, I use models in my shots a lot for scale reference. And there's that research and development image, coffee to go. Hot dog and mustard, fries. Um, this piece is actually right next to me. That's eight feet by two and a half feet by six feet tall. And uh, everything there is blown glass except for the fries and the salt shakers are mold blown into plaster molds. Sam's Cafe, uh, commission work in Chicago. That is the first box of fries that I made. Um, and that's three, uh, three feet tall, two and a half feet wide. All mold blown uh, fries. Chicago Dog. Now we'll talk about this later, but that's the shot for me. In the space, in context works, I think better than some of the formal uh, shots. Box of onion rings. A giant taco with sour cream. And then this is a mixture of some of the larger scale uh, representational work. This is a bank lollipop. It's four feet. Same thing with this blow pop with no gum. 
couldn't figure it out technically in the time I had. Plate of goodies, tie, uh, uh, car tire size donuts. I have some of those in here too, we'll see later. Screwdrivers, snap-on screwdrivers. And then this is a series called the Ribcage series, which you just saw. This is a, was a way for me to kind of use all this technical knowledge from the multi, uh, um, from the multiple demonstrations I had seen and then throw it all together and make a body of work. So these pieces range from eight inches to four feet tall and they're cups that I pre-make, cut on the saw and then blow back into. Here's us making one of them at Pilchuck. There's Steve Funk in the middle. He was in the class. That was his first class experience. Blew his mind. So they, they're similar, but they do have little characteristics that kind of change. That yellow piece is about four feet tall. Um, more representational work. This is Pittsburgh Glass Center. Some Hunter Thompson references there. That was his breakfast. I couldn't get any grapefruit made. That was his thing. Have five or six of these fruity drinks and then some grapefruit for breakfast every day. So that cigarette's 36 inches long. So about a yardstick. Glass of wine, that's three and a half feet tall. Uh, this is the beginning of the Do Not Duplicate series, which is the key series, which is right here. First set. These have been really great because they become little miniature self-portraits of the clients. The, the clients will order these and they'll literally pull their keys out and say, can you do this? And uh, I'll photograph it right on the spot from a few different angles. And that includes the type of car that they're driving, the uh, uh, maybe the lock key for a master lock they have, house keys, all that stuff. I don't know if I have an image here of one with, a, yeah, here's a Mercedes. Uh, I have little screwdrivers that go on these rings um, that people use on their keys. The decals are vinyl and I can print anything out, family logos, business logos, whatever, and then I, they're applied um, uh, decal style. Bentley, Porsche, and then just, a, I lost my keys one day. And then this is the last series and then we're done. This is the series I did out in Tacoma, Washington with the LeMay Car Museum and the Tacoma Museum of Glass to do these, um, uh, they were supposed to reference hood ornaments. And in this case, this is a moto meter that screwed on the radiator of a Model A. And what the moto meters did was right in front of you was this glass disc and then the red line would start to creep up if you were overheating. So it was a visual thing. This one I absolutely love. So I just slammed together Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Ford, uh, Chrysler, uh, um, uh, styles into one and made this body of work. These are all in the museum, the car museum in Tacoma, Washington. There's the moto meter with the red line. Time to pull over. And then the last thing is my food truck. This um, was on its way down to Duncan's and I blew the transmission in Nashville. So uh, $7,000 later, it's running beautifully. This is a walking gallery. You can walk through the stairs, through all the work. There's the inside shot. And that is it. Thanks, uh, John. Thanks, sure. that's wonderful. Um, one of, the, uh, one of the things that occurred to me is, uh, how does your family's you know, relatively recent immigrant uh, history influence your obvious fascination with Americana? I mean, you know, your work is all about Americana. It's a good question. One of my earliest memories is being at the motorcycle shop. I used to crawl on the floor, you know, when I was a kid there and I'd find nuts and bolts and all this stuff. And uh, my 
we'd always break for lunch way late, probably like three o'clock because my father was always late coming in. And we'd go to this great little diner called Kitty's Drive-In next door. And that was a really impactful situation for me um, because of, it's a gathering of people. Uh, the the uh, Kitty, the owner was uh, born in the 1800s. She had the big beehive. She had the you know, the polyester suit and everything, but it was this great experience right away in my life. And so that, that whole Americana thing kicked in. My dad was a, was a hot rod guy in the fifties. He built a lot of hot rods and raced motorcycles and built everything. So that's kind of my upbringing and they go together perfectly. Then I found glass. So big influence. And then you take that sense of community uh, in your gathering series, you know, and, um, kind of bring it all together through that too. Absolutely. Food brings people together. Drink brings people together and glass blowing, <laughs> right? It's all a group effort. I love it. And it, you can see that thread all the way through everything. Even just working large scale, you're looking at three to five assistants and it's the same thing. You have to get along with people to get your work done. And that's something I take really seriously. And in your teaching as well. Absolutely. I knew right away. I got asked as a senior in college to cover my teacher's classes because he got sick. And I said, absolutely. Just tell me what you need me to do. And I knew right away the, the interaction and the satisfaction of teaching and watching people progress was, was it for me. So it's been, geez, I started teaching in 91. So at, it's been a long at, time. At <laughs> Illinois, did you start? Where started at Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven. Then I went to Champaign University of Illinois. And I've been here for 18 years in normal Illinois. They must like you. Uh, either <laughs> that or it's just because I'm tenured. <laughs> well, you wouldn't. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So are you going to walk us through your studio now? Or are we going to do the presentation? Well, of maybe we can just uh, see the images of um, um, the stills. And then okay. we'll do a walkthrough and then people will have seen them and we can stop and spend a little more time. Okay. How are we doing for time? We're about what, 25 minutes in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this would be everybody a little walk through my shop. Um, I have a, a, um, a car dealership from 1926, an Oldsmobile dealership, and that's where my studio is. So this is uh, us making some work at DMG. Um, I couldn't tell you what year because I've been there quite a few times. It's such a wonderful experience. And then uh, we always do chalk talk all, all of the time because it's easy. I'm a very visual person. It's easy to just spit it out on the floor and then people say, oh, I see what's happening now as the hot demonstration kind of works its way out. These are the canes that I brought last time I came <clears throat> out to teach the cane class. So the students were able to take this pre-made cane, break it up into little squares and then build these patterns, which became the, uh, the pieces later. Um, so I guess maybe those pieces were an inch thick, in some cases, 12 by eight inches wide, very organic and magnified, beautiful stuff. Uh, these are the three corset pieces that are actually right across from me. Um, I do like the way they're backlit. They're all sandblasted, uh, so they hold that light. There's some close-ups there. And John, oh. what's the inspiration for the corsets? So um, I'll tell this cliche story again. I woke up with this image in my head. I was in Champaign, absolutely miserable from cu culture shock coming from the East Coast. And I had this image of this copper corset in black and I went to the studio, made it and blew that piece of glass that day. And that was the beginning of it. I think it's a crossover. Uh, it's, they're very feminine pieces, but they're also very masculine. So um, you can read into it any way you want, but they're definitely related to skin and, uh, and the corset form and what the corset uh, has done historically. box of fries. This is the first piece I made in the Blue Plate Special Series. I, I uh, uh, drew this on a napkin at Sam's Cafe and then went in and made a two-part mold and was just like, this is it! I was so excited. 
uh, bag of chips. Those, if you know anything about glass or if you don't know anything, those were made using an angle iron press. So I added the color, dripped the glass onto an angle iron press and then just smashed them to get these ruffles looking potato chips. This is a silver burger that is all reduction color. And uh, uh, the DMG people know when you use this color, you expose it to a straight propane torch later, and then the whole piece uh, strikes a metallic color. Another bag of chips there. This is the Chicago dog with the pickle and pepperoncini and tomatoes and poppy seeds and all that stuff. Some salt and pepper uh, packets next to it. My little jukebox in the back. There's a corn dog. That was inspired by Cozy Dog on Route 66 in Springfield. And that kept the mustard patch there is ladled out glass uh, onto the uh, piece of graphite. And I did a couple of ladles to get it to look like mustard and then painted it later. John, we have a question. Okay. Um, from Marion, and she says, first of all, she says, I can't believe I'm just now meeting John. <laughs> uh, what wonderful stories. Have you ever created a movie theater popcorn box or movie candy? She's people, also very hungry right now. People have asked me to do that, or could you do this? I have it all ready to go, uh, any scale. In my mind, technically, I know how this would happen. Um, and uh, um, the, the boxes would be the same as the fry and the chip boxes. They're metal that's folded and spot welded and then they get powder coated and striped with vinyl striping. So absolutely, I haven't done one. I'd love to. Oh, popcorn sounds great. Um, <laughs> also, Christine asks, uh, when you're inspired by a diner or cafe, do you show the owner what you did? That I do, I do, absolutely. I, I most of the time send images but um, uh, I am famous for doing drive-bys, not in the way that you think, but I'll pull up in my van, open the back doors and then drop a miniature cheeseburger off at, like I did that at Tesaro's in Pittsburgh. I did that at the Conway Tavern in Conway, Washington. Um, I brought uh, just all kinds of stuff for the owners because they've, I meet these people and I find out who they are and they're blue collar folks. They've invested their entire lives in making people happy and it really clicks with me. And so I give gifts out a lot. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. And this image is of uh, Danielle's favorite uh, food here. Yes, yes. These, there's a, a demo online uh, that was filmed at Corning Museum of Glass, the studio at Corning of us making a pink one and it's spectacular. You got to check it out. If you're interested in watching these things made, just punch in John Miller glass and then the videos will all start popping up corning. Um, but these are a lot of fun. This is the size of a car tire. Uh, high volume in the back and then the, the lower left is one of the gathering pieces that I talked about from Robert Carlson. I gave him that as a blank and he painted on this with uh, one shot enamel. Yes. That one got a nice little chunk bitten out of it by a giant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, these I made at Wheaton Village in 1998 at my residency there. They were running white glass and black glass in the tank. Um, box O curly fries with a ketchup bottle that's been squeezed multiple times. It's got dents all in it, which is really fun. More high volume pieces. And then the piece in the back right is that Merlot glass that I made with a cigarette next to it. I'm not a smoker, but it's kind of fun to make. Rib cage pieces, and you can kind of get an idea of the layering of color when you see these. And I believe there's a couple of close ups maybe um, coming down the line. So these, that tall one in the back there, back right, is about 36 inches tall. And then the one on the right is about 12. And I love the color on the one on the left. This is beautiful. Yeah, they're really fun pieces. And like I said, I kind of dump all of the knowledge that I have for glass into these pieces. And they're very formal fun. They reference human rib cages. They reference um, aquatic life, plant life, flowers, all kinds of things. And there's, so there's no limit to them. There's your close up. So those, uh, if, if you've seen glass blowing, the tops are cut with a saw blade. And they're very, very sharp and rigid 
before I blow into them. And then after I blow this, the bubble inside, they kind of soften up from the glory hole heat. And John, we have a question about uh, your work in general, but this series illustrates it. What's your color inspiration? How do you? Uh, I, I absolutely love high contrast. And I'm a big, big fan of, uh, of, to tell you the truth, going right back to the color wheel in some situations, really kind of stepping back, going back to foundations and looking at the color wheel. Um, and um, uh, um, geez, I've already forgotten. The, the color guru, come on folks, who is he? Um, Joseph Albers is another one that I visit a lot. Sorry, I freaked out for a second. Um, but um, just going through the color books and studies uh, that have been done over the last hundred years um, is one of the inspirations. Um, I also make pieces that reflect the studios, uh, the cities that I'm in. So this one down on the right here is definitely a Southern Florida piece, both of them actually. Some more, uh, there's blues in there, some nice greens and a little punch of yellow. And that one in the center there was engraved with the diamond wheels before I blew into the, the cup. So it, they kind of changed shapes and you can see a record of what happened with the bubble, with the patterning. They, it moves as the bubble moves. That's a beauty. Yeah, that's about three and a half feet tall. So you see some Lino influence, you see some Rich Royal influence, you see my experience in, with painting in these pieces. Uh, a lot, a lot comes through. And who else knows, you know, inspired me? Uh, William Morris with these larger scale blown forms. I mean, there's so many people that I've worked with and seen that have inspired this work. There's your cigarette with uh, a uh, little bit of lipstick on the filter. <laughs> That's right around the corner. We'll take a look at that. These pieces I might as well talk about quickly. They're four by eight sheets of plywood that I drop blown, hot blown vessels on full of latex paint. So we break them off the pipe. My assistant runs over, we fill them full of paint and I run up a ladder and then smash them onto surfaces. So there's smoke all over the place, there's paint flying everywhere. There's glass embedded in all of these paintings. Um, and sometimes the paint will, will um, fume from the heat to make all these crazy pinks. It's done under a hood system. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> so there's three in that series. Here's the second one. Um, and depending on the form that gets dropped, um, uh, um, well, it will determine the splash, um, uh, the color application. So cylinders are different from a sphere, obviously. There's, this, there's my beautiful wife for some scale reference for you guys. That's a 20 gallon beer. And I don't know whose work is on the right. I, some bomb that I ran into, in Cleveland, he gave me that and said, see what you can do with it. No, that's a Duncan piece, everybody, you know that. And then a Stephen Powell on the left. Uh, miniature Thurman Statums, they're 14 and 17 inches tall. Another Duncan, sorry for the lighting, buddy. Richard Royal, and then the De La Torre brothers on the right there, all from the gathering show. And then another Statum on the right. Robert Carlson again. Uh, Paul Nelson with the Lino cup. That's Lino's head that he sculpted in clay and then cast in, in amber glass. And there's a close up. That piece, that form is based on a cup that Lino made in 1991 at Pilchuck. The cup of Olio. Uh, there was a ball instead of the head and then the straight stem, and that's the one that we decided to use. More scale reference. Uh, Boyd Sagiki and Lisa Zerkowitz, uh, they made that beach ball and then that's a cup that Boyd would make for his goblets that I um, made for this one. More pictures of my wife. She's going to be so happy. Um, there's the screwdriver. So those sheets down there guys are two by two feet. So it gives you an idea of the scale of these things. 
Oh, there's one scale shot. A gold leafed burger. That's one of the big burgers that I do and I leafed it. There is some color coming through because I wanted a little bit of the color to kind of peek through the leaf. Um, Coca-Cola with ice and a straw. And that's a better version. Uh, there's the, the uh, cozy dog again. And then these are newer pieces. I went out and got some Fiesta ware and I've been making these colored uh, life-size burgers that same thing going back to, to the color wheel and Joseph Albert's thinking about what makes your eyes vibrate when you look at work. These pieces will be shown like that, but they'll also be cut in half and then mounted on the wall. So it'll be a half a plate and a half a burger that can hang on the wall. There's about eight in this series, different colors and um, yeah, there they are. Some of them are sandblasted, just really just kind of fooling around with color and contrasting color and all that. So we have a comment that uh, it's really neat how versatile you are. I try to be, thanks. <laughs> I'm not neat at all, but um, there's a group of a whole bunch of stuff. Um, uh, Duncan knows me very well in the, in the, as far as how I work and, and, and how we work. And, um, you know, I feel like um, I have multiple personalities as an artist and it's nice to go into the studio and if you're feeling like you wanna work formally, work formally. If you wanna be representational in my case, then have some fun and make some pickles <laughs> or whatever. Um, thanks. I try to be diverse as an artist. Yeah, these have been a big hit, this, this little installation here um, with the boxes of fries and uh, the burgers and stuff. Oh, look. I'm at DMG making a ribcage piece. How well, this is kind of reminding you that we want to have you back. Oh, love to come back anytime. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. Okay, so shall we do a little walkthrough? Absolutely. Okay, and I'll try to be steady handed. Okay, so anyway, 1926 Oldsmobile dealership, a uh, beautiful building. They used to, this used to be the showroom uh, here. So I'll spin you guys around. And here's my front window. So this is where the cars sat and you'd walk by and smash your noses against the window to see the new Oldsmobiles. Here's my little entryway. And a walk down into the gallery. There's all kinds of pieces. Here's the Rick Allen and the lipstick and the images that you saw earlier. Here's some close-ups of the ribcage pieces, some more, so you can kind of see um, these pieces. And uh, Duncan and Mary, I don't know if you know this, I took these rib cages and I made wall pieces out of them. Um, no. They're cut and flattened in the kiln and then mounted in steel. I have a whole bunch of these. I'll send you some images. Definitely. Uh, here is one of the biggest goblets I've ever made. Um, <laughs> 26 inch foot, almost killed me. And then I'll show you a close up of these paintings here. You can see some uh, of the glass embedded in the surface. Those are wonderful. Thanks. So they're, you know, obviously um, Pollock, taking, Pollock taking glass one um, inspired pieces, but I think mine are cooler. No, I'm just kidding. And here's a close up of some of that crazy fuming that happened on the yellow. Um, with a, a glass turning pink. So these are four by eight feet. And here's an old wall piece from the 90s. And then the Laura Donifer is on the floor, the black one with all the crazy Laura Donifer hair there. We'll uh, walk down here. And little bits and pieces of things all over the wall from my uh, travels. And then this is the showroom where I was talking to you earlier. Uh, this is a hot shop, everybody. I blow glass here. 
um, once or twice a year for the community just to come in and do some hands-on and have fun and we have a big party and all that stuff. Um, if anybody uh, wants me to stop, and uh, this is something that you guys haven't seen. This is a four foot uh, carton of uh, hot wings with celery. Um, hysterical piece. There's the Nelson Lino piece. And then you get a scale uh, reference with how big this stuff actually is. Um, I collect 50s tables um, for my studio space. These uh, uh, red booths that you see here are from Dog and Suds, 1956, um, in this town. And I got them for, I don't even want to tell you, it was an absolute steal. Here's the 1956 ad. And here's my buddy, Mr. <laughs> Cash. Um, so do you guys can see this reference here? There's a salt shaker on the uh, next to this piece. Can you see that? Yep. So that's 36 inches tall. Here's the silver burger. This is the reduction burger. Some chips. I actually put a little bit of ranch with that one. <laughs> and here is my 1953 AMI jukebox, with, equipped with 45s. Do you play it when you're working? All the time. All right. And then here's that grouping. And then these little guys in the boxes are uh, at DMG. Left a bunch of those when I went through. Milkshake. Um, let's see, any other? Oh, here's a miniature Coke glass. This is 14 inches tall. And then here is the red and uh, yellow box of fries, some donuts. <laughs> and then we will take a small stroll into the back. Um, I am currently working, starting to work on a series, not a series, but a piece. This 74 um, Harley Sportster will be all cast glass and blown glass. We're starting in uh, two weeks making rubber molds off of some of the parts. This will be a rolling glass motorcycle with neon uh, running through the middle of it. Um, not only that, but it's going to have Pyrex uh, exhaust pipes so I can blow fire. So you have to take that apart and cast each piece and yep. then, wow. Here's the studio space where I build motorcycles and some hot rod cars. And this is would again be the, an extension of the showroom, the Oldsmobile showroom. And here's my little 55 sitting back there. Yeah, it's a gigantic studio. It's great. Yeah, I love it. So I'll just walk back up front here with you guys. And, uh, and then I'll sit down and if, uh, I don't know where we are timing wise, but I would be glad to uh, answer some more questions if anybody has them. And then here's our little collection that I bet most of you have been to these places. The Varsity in Atlanta, uh, Portillo's, um, Nathan's Hot Dogs, all that good stuff. Well, you're not a boring person, John. Uh, thanks. I try not to be. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so we're right at 46. We're one minute over. Um, so uh, you guys tell me what to do. Well, we uh, Judy asks if you're walking with your laptop. I we was. <laughs> we <were>. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to be very light-handed because I'm such a delicate person. Um, and Fran says, we love your work and have the mini cheeseburger, fries, Chicago dog, and glass of Coke. And she's still waiting for her red straw. <laughs> okay. Got it. So, oh, wait a second. I think I left it there last time I was there. I'll have to talk to, to Dee and see what's up. All right. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about your neon work and where you're going with that? Yeah, absolutely. So when you... Um, I, uh, tying in with a blue collar advertising overtone with this work, um, you cannot not look at neon. 
Everybody walks by. It doesn't matter if it says something terrible. You're going to look at it. It's the moth to the flame thing. Um, and also the neon thing is a huge, huge part, obviously, of the diner era. And that is when you're driving across country and you're going through a little town, you see that light that says open or it says Mel's or something like that. It's almost like a big hug. You know, you pull over and you, you're in, in good hands unless it's an absolute, you know, garbage uh, trash place. And then, that, then you suffer for miles on the highway. But, um, but that's a huge part of this whole blue collar thing. And the, um, the neon signs you see behind me, uh, some of them were fabricated for exhibitions. Um, so this, this, this museum show that I have ready to go here has the diner booths. It has neon signage. Uh, some of the signs just say eat or, uh, well, I have blue plate special back there. Um, but I think it's a huge element. And if you think about artists in general, three-dimensional artists, you make your work and a lot of times it goes on a pedestal and then people say, oh, wow, this is nice. But they don't get the whole context, you know? So for me to create a studio like this to house the work makes a lot of sense. And that's what I want to do is take this studio out and set it up um, um, someplace, at a museum or institution. So the work and the con and the neon, it's all part of a cultural context. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then, you know, I have a, a lot of friends that do neon, so if I could just ask, th ask them to create anything. Um, and they have. <laughs> uh, Marion uh, asks if, uh, does everyone you know send you Americana paraphernalia? So are you constantly inundated with things? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can imagine the burger collection that I have. I have hand knitted burgers. I have salt, salt and pepper shakers that are hamburgers. Um, uh, uh, somebody from New York gave me a, a, a hat that has a little hot dog on it. So I have a whole collection of this stuff. And um, there are a lot of people who do that specifically, they have collections of these things and then they see my work and they're like, holy smokes, why don't we get one of these to go with our, our ceramic and plastic pieces? So yeah. Awesome. Um, so John, uh, Dan is weighing in, Dan Alexander, and he says you've been an inspiration for a long time and thanking you for the tour and the introduction to making large scale glass back when he was at Kent State. Yeah, he's 19 Dan years old. And on to make some great large pieces. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he stepped up and really helped out a lot back then. Uh, that was a fun workshop. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I remember most of it because we did drink Jägermeister during that, uh, that <laughs> workshop at nighttime. So it's kind of a rough morning, but everything worked out just fine. Do you keep in touch with a lot of your students? Um, I, I do. I do. We have a a high placement here at ISU, um, I basically just say, what do you want to do and where do you want to go? And if they say, well, I'd like to go to Seattle or I'd like to go to Florida, then I say, oh, you have to look up DMG. Here is the studio manager. Here is the manager of the gallery. So for me, it's a big, big deal to put really good people where they should be. And that's the whole idea with this contemporary glass movement, is if we have people like that, then it, there's no stopping this kind of uh, forward progression, you know? I know we've really all appreciated that. And Lauren is uh, saying, can't wait to have you back. So uh, Lauren, who's running the DMG School Project. So obviously that's going to happen. No, that's really. Great. I, I had a great experience. And then going to the R bar at night is a wonderful thing. Getting some oysters and shrimp and grouper. Oh, I love it. It's my favorite place. <laughs> Thanks. So Duncan, um, oh, wait, someone else has a question. Um, let's see. Would like to know more about the cherry Coke that she purchased, Marianne. Cherry Coke, okay. Yeah. Oh yes, okay. Well, now yeah, is it a small yeah. one or a big one? This was a large, right? Oh, uh, Irene, do you want to unmute yourself? Let's see. Whoops. 
Because I know you guys had one there uh, from the last show. And I didn't know if it was that one or if right. it was. It's that one, um, all boxed up and ready to be delivered. Yay. Hi, Irene. How are you? Hey, great. How are you? Oh, man. I wish I was there. Look at that goofy Jeez. goblet in the back there. Uh, <laughs> oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Big sip. That's beautiful. And obviously, Marianne is here, too, who uh, purchased your cherry Coke. Excellent. Hey, I'm going to grab a cherry right here off the shelf. <laughs> Where'd he go? John has left the building. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. These things are hysterical and so much fun to make. Uh, this is pretty bright. I like them to look like a maraschino cherry, so it has that extra uh, kick, you know, the, uh, that they've been manipulated in some <laughs> stop, you know? Um, but, th but sometimes I'll make them nice and dark red to kind of look like a regular cherry. But yeah, there's your scale reference right there. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. Yeah, um, those are fun pieces. Really great. And I know that uh, Marianne's been looking at it for quite a while and admiring it. So uh, happy to know that, that it's going to a good yeah, thank home. You. That's wonderful. Um, Joni would like to know if you have any favorite spots in Daytona, which is her homeland. Daytona. I started going there when I was 13 because my dad raced on the track, and then I raced there later uh, when I was in my early 20s. Uh, <laughs> Daytona, yes. I cannot remember the name of this place, but if you are on Volusia and you're looking at the beach, uh, the Hawaiian Inn is right there, which is where I stay every single time. Um, if you go to, if you take a right and you follow that all the way down to where it gets kind of maybe on the outskirts of the area there, there was a great seafood place at the very, very end of the beach that I used to go to as a kid. Um, the only place that I can come up with now uh, um, is uh, the, uh, it's an organization there. It doesn't have an actual building, but it's um, the rat's hole, which is a, yeah. <laughs> corporation for chopper shows and stuff and I went down there two two years ago actually after I left you guys I said I need a day and I blasted mm -hmm. out to Daytona because the race was going on um, but I'd love to go back too it's just a tough to fit it in you know well, so next if you have any places in Daytona please let me know <laughs> <laughs> next time you come you'll have to run over there we'll have to time it so you can go over to the race that's not that far away. You guys know it's what, a two hour drive or something? Two and a half? Two and a half. Yay. Well, thank you, John, so much. Um, we sure. so appreciate your being a great artist, a great uh, teacher, great per a great person. Thank you. And uh, bringing, continuing to bring inspiration to us and all the artists that you bring up, you know, through your educational world and, and just working with them and, um, you know, helping to inspire the glass community. So um, nice. really, really I, appreciate it. It's been I, great. I've said it before. I, I, I love working with you guys. And it's not just because I'm there and I've had two bud pints or something. It's because you guys are wonderful to work with. Just really good people. And that's the whole thing, right? You know, all of us have been in situations where uh, uh, something has happened. And then it just kind of sours everything. And, and it's just such a great experience every time I come down there. And we'll just plan a class and or something else uh, and uh, make it happen. I, I love being there. Thanks. Um, one question, are the pieces in your studio for sale? They are. And uh, Mary has all the information. Um, if anybody's interested in anything, I can take multiple images of that specific piece or body of work, send it off to you guys. And uh, that way there's more angles and scale references and things like that. Yeah, all through DMG. That's great, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thank you, John. And thanks thank everybody you. for joining us at the beginning of this long holiday weekend. Thanks for taking the time out, you know, to, to be with us. That's really awesome. I appreciate it um, too. Yeah. Next week, if you don't mind me plugging, uh, we have uh, Mark Petrovic and Kari Russell-Poole. So, John, nice come yeah. and uh, 
you know, talk to them as well. So that's great. Uh, thanks, thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks for thanks. coming. See you thanks, soon. Guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.